Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Motion 5. And today we're going to be taking a look at this exploding, shattering demolition effect. Now this is another concept that's inspired by Andrew Kramer at videocopilot.net. recommend you check out his original tutorial on this, but obviously motion is a very different application to After Effects and there's a whole load of different things we need to consider. The first of which is that in After Effects you can actually shatter an image directly using the CC Pixel Poly effect. And motion doesn't have anything similar. So we've got to find a way of simulating that kind of shattering. Now, what a lot of people do is they simply add a particle effect that is uses the, the shape as an emitter source. And then they very quickly dissolve between the shape and the particle system. But in the real world, if you shatter an object, it won't instantly disintegrate into a thousand pieces you'll have tiny fragments, you'll have medium-sized fragments, but you'll also have very large pieces of the original object. And that's one of the things I really want to address here. Okay, so let's get started. My project is 1920 1080, 24 frames a second, and I've got a duration of 10 seconds. Okay, so before we start on our project of demolition, we need to build our wall in the first place. So I'm going to take this initial group and I'm going to duplicate it three times. I'm going to use the Command D shortcut, but you could also use the duplicate option there. So Command D three times. This base group I'm going to call Shape. Next one up I'm going to call Invert. Next one I'm going to call Displace. And the top group I'm going to call Wall. So I'm going to put Invert and Shape into Displace and I'm going to put Shape into invert. And so in that shape group, I'm going to select my text tool and I'm going to type the word demolition. Choose center alignment, set my size to 240, set the baseline to negative 80, that's a third of 240, just to get it centered. And finally just reset that position so my text is now centered in my frame. Next thing I want to do is I want to come to that invert group and I want to apply a color negative. That inverts that group, but what we also need to do is we need to add a color solid to this shape group. So I'm going to come to Add Object uh, Generators Color Solid, and we're going to move it down behind the text, and we're going to set its color to black. So now we've got black text on a white background. Next thing I want to do is I want to come to my wall group and import my wall texture. So I'm going to grab this concrete wall element here. I'm going to put a link to these various items in the comments. So import that. Next, I want to duplicate that wall layer. Right click duplicate, and I'm going to add an image mask to it. So right click add image mask. I'm going to use the shape group as the source for that. Drag that into there. Remember to turn that shape group back on again. And I'm going to set the source channel to luminance. And then I'm going to set the blend mode of this to multiply. And it gives us this nice darkened version of that. So this is what's going to be left behind once we've blown the letters off the wall. So I've reduced that opacity down to 80 just to make it a little bit more subtle. Next, I want to make some hairline cracks that appear before the main demolition takes place. So I'm going to come to this displace group here and I'm going to import this thing called cracks high con. Then I'm going to come up to my wall group here and I'm going to add a filter, so stylize indent. And then for the height map, I'm going to select this displace group. And you can see that that's now applied those cracks to the wall. 
So let's just set up that indent filter a little bit better. Let's reduce the softness down to 0 0.07. Brightness can come all the way up to 1. The ambient, let's leave as it is. Crack up the highlight sharpness, so we don't want any shininess on this. And let's reduce the depth down to 5. And for the light rotation, we want 0, because we want the light coming from the top. So obviously we want these to animate on in a kind of organic way. And to do that, we're going to make a special type of mat. So I'm going to make a new group at the top here, and I'm going to call this uh, mats, because I'm going to put various different things into this. And I'm going to move that right to the back of the project. OK, and what I'm going to do then is to add generators clouds. I'm going to set the speed to zero. I'm going to open up the gradient editor here. So what I need to do is I need to link the black and the white together. So I'm going to select the black tab there. I'm going to come to location, add parameter behavior link. I'm going to drag the clouds itself into the source well. Now, the black is RGB1 and the white is RGB2. So compatible parameters, object, clouds, gradient, RGB, RGB2, location. And then we simply need to enter an offset of negative 5. And then if we come to, I'll need to solo that so you can see. If I now move the white, you'll see we've got this very nice organic wipe effect. And we can use that to reveal our cracks. So I just need to animate that. So click on the white tab, location, come to the start of the project, set a keyframe for the location of 75. Now I want my explosion to happen at two seconds, so I'm going to move forward to two seconds on the timeline. And then I'm going to drag the white all the way across like that. I'm going to unsolo that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as an image mask for that cracks element there. So right click, add image mask, drag the clouds in there, set the source channel to luminance. And now I think you can see how that grows on gradually over those two seconds. So I want those cracks to be a little bit more defined. And I can very easily do that by taking this cracks layer and copying it into the wall group. So I'm going to hold down the Alt or Option key and drag it up just to that point there. And then I'm going to set its blend mode to multiply. And you can see that's much, those cracks are much, much heavier now. Probably a bit too heavy, so let's reduce that opacity down to about 75. Maybe that's still a bit too heavy. Try it, let's go for 50. Okay, I also want some very heavy cracks that appear well as during the demolition process. So I'm going to come back to my displace group, select it, and I'm going to import this image called deep cracks. And I'm also going to copy that into the wall group as well, in the same way, holding down the Alt or Option key, drag it above those cracks that I've, in, I've put in there. And let's also set that blend mode to multiply. Now, what we need to do is we need to find a way of bringing this on as the demolition happens. Now, if you remember, the demolition happens from left to right in a sequence rather than uh, as a, as a one-off explosion. So we need to create a traveling mat in order to do that. And so we're going to create a new project to build that mat in. So I've made a new project. It's also 24 frames a second, 10 seconds long, same project dimensions as my main project, 1920, 1080. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in a generator, color solid, make that white. I'm going to set the width of this to 2,500 pixels. And I'm going to come over to properties. And I just want a bit of shear on this. So I'm going to set an X shear of 10 degrees. And that'll give us an angle. Then I want to 
come to the group here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the position of this. But first of all, I'm just going to park it somewhere in the middle so we can see what it looks like. I'm going to add two filters to this. But first of all, I'm going to come to Stylize, Crystallize. And then I'm also going to add Color Levels. The Crystallize, I want a size of 42. You see, this gives us this really nice jagged edge to our mat. And I'm going to use the Levels tool on the Alpha in order to make a really sharp edge and remove those, just to remove those little semi-transparent edges that the Crystallize filter has given me. And now what I can do is I can animate that group to bring us from here to at three seconds. Three seconds, going to drag that along until we've got a full frame of white. And then we get a mat that looks like that. Just want to increase the speed of that crystallized filter, gives a little bit more crumbly sort of edge. So the next step is to export this as a movie. So share export movie, I'm going to set this to ProRes proxy, and I'm going to save this off as crumble mat. New. I've already made one, but I might as well make a new one like that. Very quickly render it off. And we can close this project. I would advise you to save it. I'm not going to bother. OK, so now we can bring this into our pro main project. So I'm going to come to that mat group there, import, and I'm going to select that crumble mat, new. Down there, it's hidden away at the moment. So first of all, there are two places we need to apply this mask, the first of which is to that wall group there. So add image mask, and let's scroll down, drag in the crumble mat, set the source to luminance. And now you'll see that that wipes on like so. Now, I don't want this to start until two seconds in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that crumble mat layer there inside that max group. And at two seconds on the timeline, I'm going to select move selected in point. And what that does is it makes it begin at that point there. Now you'll see we're also seeing our layer before that. So what we need to do is we just need to shorten it down. So where is that? This layer here, the cracks layer, again at two seconds, with that layer selected, I'm going to hit I on the keyboard, and what that does is it shortens that down so it only starts at two seconds in. We'll come to our deep cracks, because obviously we're, we're, we're seeing that in our indent there. We need to come to the deep cracks in the displace group, do the same thing with the layer selected, hit I, and I can copy that image mask that I've created on that wall group there, copy that down into that deep cracks in the displace group there. And then finally, because that's looking a little bit odd, what I need to do is I need to move my the order of these two cracks layers so that high con cracks, I'm going to move above. And now we've got those cracks appearing and the main crack comes on later. So now we want to build the text that is going to be demolished off the wall. Now let's close up the wall group. Let's close up this displace group for a time being and put that mats group as well. And let's make a new group at the top here. And let's call this shape body. OK, so I'm going to import my wall texture again, concrete wall. And obviously we want to cut it out. So I'm going to apply an image mask come back down into that displace group, dive down there till we get to the shape group, drag that in, remember to turn the shape group back on again, and set the source channel to luminance. Just going to turn off the wall for the moment, just so we can see it a little bit clearer. I'm going to do a couple of things to this group. Let's come to filters, and come down to stylize, and we're going to look for extrude. So let's just set up that extrude filter. So let's start off with an angle of 270. Let's set the distance to 15. 
let's set the front brightness to 0.3 and the back brightness down to 0.05, something quite nice and dark. I'm going to adjust this extrude angle once we've set up our camera so that it, it looks more correct. We're actually going to go for 284. Let's leave it at that for now. That's, that's not looking too weird as it is. Next, I just want to add a little bit of extra shading to this text. So I'm going to bring in, I'm going to select that wall layer, and I'm going to bring in another layer. And this one is going to be called Old Cement. And it doesn't really matter what the size is, but I might just scale it up a little bit like that. And I'm going to apply that same image mask as I've used for the concrete wall, add it to that. Let's set this blend mode to multiply. And you can see that it's doing this nice sort of darkening effect. And then let's come down and select the rectangle mask tool. And we just want it on the lower half. So I'm going to draw a rectangle down like that. What we need to do is we need to select this, set this to subtract and invert. And then we just need to feather it out quite a lot. Probably something like 200 is going to be good. And then just bring it down just so it's on the lower half of the text like that. And you can see that just gives us a little bit more interest there. What I also want to do is I want to take this shape group and add a drop shadow. So turn on the drop shadow. Let's open up those controls. Let's set the opacity to 100. The blur let's set to 10. And that just gives us this extra kind of con contact shadow. Uh, we might just adjust that angle. Maybe go for that same 284 on that. And that gives us a little bit more feeling that it's actually on the wall. I also want to add some staining to the wall where the letters are. So I'm going to come to this group here and let's come to the top of it, I think. So import, and I'm going to import this thing called drips. Let's set the blend mode of this to multiply. And then what we want to do is, we again, we want to mask it using the text mask. So I'm going to add image mask. And let's just come in and again, grab that shape, set the source to luminance. And obviously now we can't see it because it's behind everything. Let's remember to turn that shape group back on again. Let's close up displace. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a couple of things here. I'm going to add a blur to the image mask. So Gaussian blur and also a stylize min max. Now I've got the order of that wrong. I want the min max on the bottom. I want to switch to maximum on the min max filter, set the radius to 15. And you can see that's increased the area. And this is what we want. And then I'm going to increase that Gaussian blur up to 200. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to come to the image mask offset here, and I'm going to set the Y position to negative 100. And now you can see that that's given us this nice sort of effect of nastiness sort of dripping off where those letters are. And again, that just helps a bit with the realism. So obviously we're going to want these letters to disappear as they're being demolished. So in order to do that, we're going to come to the shape body group. We're going to add an image mask. Let's shoot on down here to our mats group, drag in our crumble mat into there. Let's set the source channel to luminance and the blend mode to subtract in this instance. And then you'll see that the letters get removed as our big crack gets wiped on. So our next step is to create the, the falling fragments. And to do that, I'm going to duplicate this shape body group because obviously we want our fragments to look exactly the same as the text that we're destroying. So I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to call this fragment A because I'm going to have three different fragment elements. Now, we actually want to reverse this mat. So let's set that to add. 
because what we want is these pieces to appear as the main shape is disappearing. Now to create our fragments, I'm going to need to make a new matte element. So let's make a new project in which to do that, just to keep things a little bit tidier. We could do it in this main project, but it's best to make these sort of subsidiary elements separately to avoid overcomplicating. So a new project. So it doesn't matter what the length is. We're just creating a still. So I'm going to add two elements to this. Add object generators color solid. Add object generators clouds. I'm going to come to the inspector for the clouds. I want to open up the gradient here and bring in the black and white tab. So we've got a nice sharp contrast between those two areas. And we don't need any speed on this, not that it's relevant here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new group and I'm going to create a rectangle. So selecting the rectangle tool, I'm going to hold down the shift key and draw a rectangle like that. Come over to geometry. We're going to set that size to 400. And we also want to set the fill to white. I'm going to turn off this clouds element here because we don't need to see that. And I'm going to make a replicator out of this rectangle. So object replicate. Open up the size, set it to 1920 by 1080. Let's set the arrangement to random fill and let's set the points to 100. We're going to come down to color mode and we're going to select pick from color range. And then we're going to open up the gradient editor. Now we want three colors. We want red, green, and blue. So I'm going to make the first tab red, the last one blue. I'm going to click to make a new tab in the middle and set this one to green. Now we don't want these colors interpolating. Uh, we want them to be either red or green or blue, but not not anything in between. So I'm going to select the red color tab and I'm going to set the interpolation to constant. Do the same with the green. And then what we need to do is set the positions of these so we get an even blend of each of them. So I'm going to set the green location to 33 and the blue location to 66. So that's roughly a third of, of each. Then let's just mess up the angle a bit. Uh, let's have an end angle of, I don't know, 20, uh, angle randomness of 75. And so now we've got this nice hodgepodge of, uh, of colors. Just need to reset the position of it's centered up like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my rectangle and I'm going to come to filters, distortion, bump map. And I'm going to add the clouds as the bump map source. I'll set the direction to zero. And I also want to add a bump map to the enclosing group there. So filters, distortion, bump map. Again, let's use the clouds. Let's set the direction to zero and the amount to negative 0.1. And you see we've now got this nice grungy multicolored or three colored mat. And then what we're going to do is we're going to save this so X share, save current frame, JPEG will do, choose next, and I'm going to save it out as color matte. So now back in our main project, let's import that element that we've made. Let's come down to our mats group and let's import color matte. So now let's come to our fragment A group. And I want to add another image mask to that. So add image mask, and we're going to come down and select the color mat as the mask source. Now let's choose red as the source channel and subtract as the mask blend mode. And now I think you can see that we've got, let's just turn everything else off because it's a little bit confusing with so many elements. So you, now you can see we've got a nice set of broken fragments there. And we're using the red channel of that crazy uh, three colored mat. So we'll be able to use the green and the blue for fragments B and C. 
Now, we only want this layer to appear at two seconds in. So I'm going to come to two seconds on the timeline. With that fragment A group selected, I'm going to hit I on the keyboard. And as you'll see down here on my mini timeline, that only begins at two seconds in. Right, I want to add some behaviours to this to get the fragments to fall. And I'm going to do this wrong initially just to show you something. So I'm going to come to Simulations, Gravity, because obviously we want these things to fall. And I don't know where you can see, that's not working right at all. And there are two reasons for that. First of all, we need to come to this coloured image mask and we need to turn off stencil there. That's looking a little bit better, but it's not quite right. So we need to come down to the bottom of the group to the image mask here that is masking the, the wall element. And again, turn stencil off there. Now you'll see there's a little bit of a problem with our overlay element there, that old cement thing. So we can turn that stencil off as well, but then you'll see we've got a little bit of a problem. And that's because we've scaled this element. So really we need to undo that scaling on that. And now it fits and it moves with everything else. Okay, so let's add some more behaviours to this fragment group. First of all, I'm going to add basic motion spin. I'm going to add basic motion throw. And I'm going to duplicate that. So we've got two instances of the throw. And let's just set those up. I'm going to have a spin value of two. And this is just going to rotate it as it falls like that. This first throw element, I want to do something with the timing of this. So I'm going to come to 204 on the timeline. And with that throw element selected, I'm going to hit O. So now this is only going to operate for those four frames, or five frames actually. So let's set it up, open up the XYZ controls there, and I want a Z value of 750. And that's just going to push it forward at the moment of impact. And now let's open up the other one, and we want to set the Z to 100. And now this is gradually going to fall forward like so. Now, my chunks are much too big, and so I want to eat away at them a bit. So I'm going to select my red, green, and blue image mask there, and I'm going to come to Filters, Stylize, and I'm going to select Min Max. And I'm going to set that value up to something like 8, maybe even 10. And you see, as I do so, that's eroding those chunks. So there's going to be bits missing, and that's I want I, want, I don't, don't want these to be too big. I want there to be quite a lot missing. Maybe even go for 12. If we don't like exactly how that's landing, we can very slightly tweak the offset of the of the image mask itself like that. Okay, so then it's fairly easy. We're just going to duplicate this two more times. So right-click duplicate. Let's call this fragment B. Let's step into it. Let's come to the image mask there. And instead of red, we're going to select green. And you can see that's given us some more chunks. And now what we want to do is we want to just very slightly adjust our behaviors so it's not doing exactly the same thing. So this top throw, I'm going to set to 200. The bottom throw here, I'm going to set that Z value to 1000 and Let's move it up on Y as well. That's 20 on Y. And let's zero out that rotation. Oh, not that. Zero it out. So now there's, you can see those chunks are falling in, in a different way. And that's all we need to do is we need to introduce some, some variety variation in there. And let's duplicate that again. So right click duplicate. Let's call this fragment C. And again, let's step in to the image mask, select the blue channel. You can see we've got more fragments in there. And then again, let's step in and adjust the behaviors. I'm going to increase the gravity here to 90. I actually meant to do that on the previous version. So let's come back to fragment B and let's increase that gravity to 85. And on fragment A, I also want to adjust the gravity. Let's go for 60 there. 
OK, let's come back to C and let's go for a spin here of negative 2. Let's set this throw here to 500, zero out that Y, and set this Z value to 250. And now you can see we've got these fragments that are falling in a, each in a different way. So here's what it looks like with the base layer added back in again. And you can see that's starting to work. Now, what's going to sell this, of course, is some particles. And what we want to do is we want to create some really nice looking particles that look as though they're made out of this element here. And to do that, we're going to step into a whole new project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the dimensions of this project 150 by 150. So it's just this small square here. And uh, let's come back there. And we only need a second in duration because we're going to make, be making 24 particles. So at 24 frames a second, that'll be 24 particles. OK, and we want to import our concrete wall texture, the same one we're using. Come to Properties. Let's set this scale to 100%. So now we want to select the group and we want to come down to the Masks menu here. And off the bottom of the screen, there's an option called Freehand Mask, which allows me to just draw a random rock-like shape like that. I think that'll do. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to come to Behaviors, Shape, Wriggle Shape. And let's set the amount to 3. Let's set the apply mode to add and subtract. Let's set the frequency to 0.1. Let's increase the noisiness to 1. And now, hopefully you can see, as we step through, we're getting a different shape on every frame. And what I'd also do is add a behavior to the Y scale. So right-click on that, add parameter behavior, randomize. Let's set the amount to 30. Let's set the apply mode to subtract. Frequency leave as is, noisiness up to one. And again, you'll you see from this that what it'll do is it'll give us random scaling. Then I'm going to come to filters and we're going to get look for our good old friend crystallize. And let's set the size to three. And then our final task is to select the concrete wall layer. And I'm going to right click on the position, add parameter behavior, randomize here. And what we're going to do is set an amount of 300, set the apply mode to add and subtract. And now I think you can see that on every frame, we've not only got a completely different shape, but we've also got a different texture. So what we can then do is export it. So share export movie. We'll need to select ProRes 444. I'm going to save it into my textures folder here and I'm going to call it Rubble Textures and render that out. Probably best to save this project, Rubble Maker or something, just in case you ever wanted to come back to that. And we can close it down. So back in our Master project, let's make a new group and let's call this particles. And let's import that rubble textures animation that we just made. And then let's come to object, make particles. So we only want this to run from two seconds on the timeline. So at that point there, I'm going to hit I on the keyboard with the emitter selected and then it, it's starting at two seconds. Let's set the shape to a rectangle and the arrangement to random fill. And let's set the size to 150. Now, at a frame before two seconds, I want to set the birth rate down to zero. And then at two seconds, one frame forward, I want to set it to 250. And to step forward to four seconds, set another keyframe, step forward one frame, and set that birth rate down to zero. We need a life of 10. Let's set the speed to 250, speed randomness to 100. Let's set the angle randomness to 720. Let's have a 
spin of, I don't know, 200. Spin randomness, 360. So oh, introducing loads of randomness into this. So let's scroll down to the scale here. So I want to set the scale to five. And the scale randomness, I want to open that up. And I want an X scale of 50 and a Y of 100. And now in order to use the full range of particles that we created, I need to turn off play frames. And what that means is it will randomly pick an image from that sequence for each of the particles. And you can see that's looking much, much better. We've got loads of different, loads of variety in that. Right, now I want to animate the position of the emitter. But first of all, you'll notice that although I said I wanted the animation to start at two seconds, the wipe is not happening till around 2.16 something. So what we need to do is we need to come down to the mat element there, the crumble mat element, and we need to come to around two seconds and then pick it up on the mini timeline here and drag it back until at two seconds we see, see the first signs of a crack. So then at two seconds, I'm going to come back to my emitter here and I'm going to animate its position. I only want to animate its X position, turn on the overlay so I can see the position of that emitter, move it over to there, I'm going to move it up on Y so it's a little bit more centered like that. And then let's move along till our dem initial is complete. So it's around about there. So let's move this across to roughly there. So we're going from negative 650 to roughly positive 650. And that looks like this. And you can see the two operations are now nicely in sync. And we also need to add some gravity to this emitter. So behaviors, simulations, gravity. And let's set that to 150. And what I haven't done is I haven't set up the direction of these particles. So I need to come back to the emitter. So I want them to far upwards and outwards. So in order to do that, we're going to need to turn on the 3D switch because at the moment they're just a flat plane. And this will allow us to have them far upwards at a 45 degree angle. So that's 45 degrees of latitude. We don't want any longitude. And we want to set the emission range to 90. And that'll fire them out of the screen towards us. And I think you can see that that's starting to work quite nicely now. They're being dragged down by the gravity. Okay, so the next thing to do is to make some smaller ones. So I'm going to duplicate this group Let's call this small, and the other one we can call large. So the small one, we're just going to adjust some of the parameters. So first of all, let's address the issue of the number of particles being generated. So at our first keyframe here, at two seconds, let's set that to 500, I think. And then come to the end, maybe set that down to 400. And let's adjust the speed. Let's make these fly a bit faster because they're smaller. So 350 for the speed. Let's click on the random seed button there to make it a bit more random. And let's address the issue of the scale. I'm going to leave the actual scale at five, but I'm going to increase the, adjust the scale randomness. So 15 on X and 40 on Y for the scale randomness. And so we now have got some much smaller particles I might increase the gravity, I think, on these larger particles. So let's go for 200. I think that's better. They look, they look heavier now. So now I'm going to turn back on our wall element so we can see everything in context. Once we've got our camera angle sorted, it's going to look a lot better. So let's sort that out initially. Let's close up particles and all these other groups. I'm going to make a new group right at the top. I'm going to call it all. And I'm going to put everything into that. Then I'm going to add object camera. Keep as 2D, but turn this all group to 3D. 
So then I'm going to come to the camera and let's open up its rotation. So 10 degrees on X, 10 degrees on Y. Let's set the Z position as negative 250. Let's also add some camera shake. So let's click on the position, add parameter behavior, randomize. Let's select properties transform position X and Y. Let's set the apply mode to add and subtract and the frequency up to 20. Now we need to animate this. So let's come to two seconds on the timeline, set that value down to zero. Let's step forward to 212 and set that value to 18, something like that. Step forward to four seconds, set it back down to zero. And now we get a good shudder as the demolition happens. Uh, you'll want to add some lights, obviously, but there's one other thing I want to do before we do that, and that's to come to the top of this group here and add a new group inside that. So object new group. And I'm going to add the particles and the fragments, but not the shape body. I'm going to add to this group and I'm going to call it shadow. And then I'm going to come down to the drop shadow and I'm going to turn that on. So what we want to do is at two seconds, we want to keyframe the distance, a distance of five at the two second mark. Step forward to four seconds and let's increase that distance to 500. And let's also increase the blur factor. So let's go for 30 and let's set the light angle to that same 284 degrees. And what that does is it casts these nice shadows of the fragments onto the, onto the back wall. It's possibly a little bit heavy. Let's reduce that down to about a 65 or something like that. But that re really helps to sell the, the depth. So let's also add some lights. So add object to light. I'm going to set the intensity to 1000 and the fall off to 15. Uh, let's come to properties. Let's set that Z position to 150 and just move it up a bit on Y like that. Let's duplicate it. Let's move this one over on X, maybe a little bit down on Y. Duplicate it again. Move this one over on X and quite a bit down on Y to somewhere around there. Decrease the fall off on this one just so it lights up a little bit more of that bottom corner. And there's one more thing I want to do, and that's, put in, and that's to put in some staining on this back wall once the explosion has happened. I'm going to come down into the wall group here and down at the bottom here, just above that second instance of the, the second instance of the wall, I'm going to import an extra element, that smudge layer there. I'm just going to increase that scale there to 75. And I need to group this, so I'm going to right click group and I'm going to set that group to fixed resolution. The reason for that is to keep that indent filter in registration. You can see the difference that, that makes. So then I'm going to set, set this group here to multiply and let's set the opacity down to about 60. We need to apply an image mask to the smudge layer. And obviously it's going to be our crumble mat wipe. So add that in there, set the source channel to luminance. And that wipes on with everything else. And it gives this nice sort of residue at the end, like that. We'll just need to add an image mask so that it doesn't appear on this side of the letters, which looks a little bit odd. So come down here, add a rectangle mask like so, use that to set that to subtract and invert and just feather that in enough like that. So it's disappearing off the edges of the letters like that. And I think that just helps to sell the idea that the wall's been blasted. 
There's a few other things I did in my version, one of which was to add a dust layer that animates with the with the particles, and that looks rather nice. Uh, but it's quite a long time to set up, uh, and I think um, you've all had enough by now, so um, I'll leave it at that. But just before we go, I'd like to point out one important thing, which is that because of the way we've set up this whole project, we can easily swap out the source object. So, for example, I can come back into my text here and just retype it, and it all updates. But I can also bring in an image. So I'm going to import this logo shape, and let's turn off the text. And you'll see that it all works in exactly the same way. And all we've done is we've literally just swapped out the image. So it's a very, very easy thing to adapt. So I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much for watching this rather epic tutorial. Hope to see you again another time.